Right, what nonsense are you going to ask me today? <laughs> Well, Craig, um, obviously last weekend um, everyone was left a bit puzzled after the game with the, the lead up to the Rangers goal. But um, now you've had sort of a chat with the SFA and had time to reflect and all of that, how are you feeling about it now? Exactly the same way as I did on Saturday or Sunday, whatever it was. Exactly the same way. How frustrating is that then that you've been left in that position? Um, I don't think people are really that concerned about how frustrated I am. What do you think, you know, can there be lessons learned from that situation? Well, there could be. Mm -hmm. Could be. Do you think there will be? That's a different question altogether. How frustrated were the players? Because obviously they looked like some of them had stopped and, you know, and then... Listen, I, don't, I don't want to go back over old ground. My thoughts aren't going to change. Nothing that I've heard since Saturday has changed my mind on what happened. Um, and I think it was really unjust what happened. And of course you move on this weekend and you've got Dundee United away in the league. Um, what's your thoughts heading into that game? Because obviously you have been playing really well and um, unfortunate last weekend with the result. But you know, what's your thoughts heading into this? Well, it'll be tough, I think, any time that I've been to Tana Dice with any team, it's been uh, a real challenge. Um, and they've, they've started the, the season reasonably well. Um, but we know what we're facing, we know what to expect. Um, it's just whether we can be good enough on the day to come away with the points. And obviously, um, it's a team that you've managed in the past. Um, you know, what's your thoughts <coughs> excuse me, on Dundee United this season so far? Well, I haven't seen... Uh, more than than highlights really of their uh, first couple of matches. So um, yeah, and I, I think going to Tana, as I say, they're going to Tana is tough, and you know, I, it's one of those games that I think it's pretty close. You know, I think if you looked on paper, it's quite close, and they've got a slight advantage with a home tie, but uh, we're in really good form, and yeah, difficult difficult to call, but. You know, I think it'll be a tight match. And we're obviously coming closer to the transfer window closing. Um, are you still working to bring any players in? Yeah, we're still working to do a bit. Some players leaving, some players coming in. Um, whether that happens, I can't. Right now, I can't genuinely tell you if that's going to happen or not. And there's been a lot of talk of Adama Sidi being interested in him. Has there been any concrete interest in him? Not that I know of. No. Do you expect him to still be here beyond the end of the week? I, I don't know. I don't know. I hope he is, to be fair. And team news, anybody on or out from last week? Uh, I don't, uh, David's been training, David Kelchins has been training the last couple of days, so um, I'm pretty sure that uh, if he gets through training again today and without any discomfort, then he'll be made available for for the game tomorrow as well. Who else? Andre Raymond had a little bit of an ankle knock, but he's he's going to be fine, I'm sure. Obviously, we've we've got Sam out for a fairly lengthy period of time, um, and I'd, I'd probably miss somebody, but I can't off the top of my head think who it was. Can I ask you about the SFA review that came out this week? Um, as an ex-Scotland manager, obviously, it says that Scotland I haven't read it. I haven't read that. Basically, the long and the short of it is that the Scottish clubs are not playing enough players between 16 and 21. I, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. What do you think the main reasons are? And Managers worried about their jobs. Fairly simply. That's the answer. And um, with the short numbers in the league, every manager has has concerns. and <clears throat> it's It's not an easy thing to to turn to a 16 or 17 or 18 year old and put them on in front of a seasoned professional. Um, but I believe that, that young players can bring fresh energy and enthusiasm into the into the group. But it's not for me to tell other managers what they should do. Is that something you still try and do, put a young player in, even if it is? Yeah, if I can, yeah. If I, if I feel that the, play, the young player is better than, than the other player that's in his position, then yeah, of course.
I remember when you were at Hearts, there was a period you were just flooding the team almost with teenagers at one mm-hmm. point, like Sir Harry Crocker and guys like that. Yeah, I think you can tell in training if they're of the required standard. But it's difficult sometimes when you're leaving out a seasoned professional to put a young kid in, and I, I get that. But I, I would, I would, I would say that, that putting young players in your team can help the senior pros. Gives them, you know, you can speak to them about looking after the young lad while he's on the field, and it gives them a purpose on top of what they're already focused on. Um, and I find that helps. Um, and we all had to start somewhere, and, and I think back to, to the time that I was a, a teenager, I was playing at Cowdenbeath. Um, and at that time, there wasn't the academy systems, and most of the players who were coming through were playing boys' club football and, and maybe signing an S form with, with a club, um, and then going in full time when they turned 16. Um, and there was guys like John Cahoon was at Stirling Albion, John Philibin was at Stirling Albion, Gordon Jury was at East Fife, I was at Cowdenbeath. So there was a lot of players who weren't at bigger clubs, they were just playing in the lower divisions. And you know, there's, there's a stat regarding players who were playing at the very top level in the Champions League, and, and that is, I can't remember the exact numbers off the top of my head, but really what it means is that these top players have all played something like 100 matches before they reach 19 or 20 years of age. And that early experience is the thing that can, can drive their career. But I'm not going to sit here and tell anybody that have got to play mm-hmm. young players. It's just my view on it. I mean, it was two of the points they made was if, if you put young players in, you've got a better chance of reducing your wage budget and also seeing it as a revenue stream mm-hmm. further down the line to selling them on. Yeah, yeah there are obvious... Um, pluses, aren't there? You know, and uh, you know, I think a lot of the owners quite like that idea of you know putting young lads in. But to the, the you have to go to the other side as well, and say if you introduce a young player at 16, 17 years of age who isn't physically capable of dealing with the problems that he's going to have, then you can you can really damage somebody's career. So it's a balancing act, isn't it? And uh, you have to weigh up everything, especially how much, how good the player's been doing training, um, to give you confidence that he can go into a first team match and perform at that same level. But I keep coming back to the same thing. It's not for me to to see anything to any other manager. They they do what they want to do. Just sort of on that, that you know, the, the youngsters obviously, you know, they get a point being as well to, to you know produce more players for the national team, and obviously you can see, you know from your view on it but do you think that there's a way of, of, you know a possible like some leagues have a regulation of you know the number of, of youngsters that need to be involved in the match they scored or we did have <coughs> excuse me we did have that at one time probably when you were about that size <laughs> um, I think you had to so many teenagers or underage players in the, in the squad um, and I, I don't know if that's helpful because sometimes they're just there because you have to have them and they're not there on merit. And that, for me, is more of a concern. You know, they, re- they really have to earn their place. It's valuable. Getting a starting jersey in, a, in men's football for somebody at 16, 17 is it's a pretty big thing. You need to be good enough and you need to be ready. Just finally, obviously, a new CEO taking over at the, the club here and obviously it's been you know, quite a lot of change off the, the pitch over the summer. Has that been difficult for you to, to manage around, you know, focusing on the football side of things? Not particularly, no. Um, I've just been getting on with things as normal.